Hello there, welcome to my channel. Let's start a new series with a production ready e-commerce application. So now if you are new to my channel, I'll be happy to welcome you on board as a new subscriber. So far I have delivered a lot of good contents with real life projects that will guide you to get a clear understanding of build and deploy applications smoothly. You can check this playlist if you are new to the backend ecosystem and microservice. In this series, we will work on serverless technology using Node.js, where we will use some of the advanced concept of microservice and the serverless. This lecture will be a bit of theory and illustration of backend system, where we will discuss about the core components of the backend system and how we can proceed when it comes to build a system. When we think of build a system, it comes to the mind we need to have a kind of API server and a front end, that's all. But that's not the reality. But the reality is to understand the business domain and the product requirements and plan your application accordingly. How we can do so? Let's deep dive a bit on this topic. To build a system, we need to, we need to care about the following points. These are the points we need to consider when we are thinking about the build a system. The first point is the product requirement where we will get to know what, what exactly we are going to build and what is the business requirements. It will be clarified in this, in this first point. Second point is system design, where we will having a kind of good understanding uh, what kind of projects or what kind of the product we are going to build and what are the constants uh, we need to consider and what are the requirements is going to be have uh, as a talk technical or non-technical perspective. So that is what we will be discuss on this one. And third one is the like technology uh, and the infrastructure selection and decision. So what kind of technology you are going to use for your application or your system, that is what we are going to discuss right here. And after that, we are, we are going to select what kind of infrastructure you are going to use to when it comes to deployment and, and the suitability of uh, apart from your business domain. And um, these are the things exactly going to happen in infrastructure selection and decision. Fourth point is epics and time estimation, where we will uh, translate all this product requirement to technical storyboard, where we will get some kind of uh, estimation um, apart from how many hours of the work or how, how much time it's going to be needed for a specific product. Fifth point is the feasibility and the proof of concept where we will do a little bit uh, R&D on a specific feature or whether it is possible or uh, if we need to do a little bit alterations uh, to achieve that specific uh, product requirement. That is what we will do and we will, we, will, we will prepare a kind of proof of concept. Sixth point is the stress driven development and the continuous integration and continuous delivery. Because right after the POC, we can have a kind of clear picture what exactly we need to do. And with the help of the test driven development, we, we can have all this functionality ready along with the test cases. So these are the points we need to take a consideration when we will be building uh, the whole system. In this series, we will be building a result product portal like eBay, which will be a C2C model web application. The application will be pretty much look like this, where uh, people can come and register and log in. And after that, they can create their own product right here and they can advertise to sell. And other people, the buyer will be come to this platform and they can source the, the product by category or the product name and they can buy the product from here, right? So this is the main goal of this application. So what is the exact product requirement? We can, we can check it out right here. So the product requirement says we need to build a web application which can facilitate the buy and the sale of a new or used products in a certain price range. Right, that's good and where the seller can post their product and advertise it for the sale and the buyer can source and view product as per their choice and buy it online. That's pretty cool. We should have the buy online feature as well as. That's great. An application should provide a feature, talk to buyer with the seller directly without a mediator and buy the product by paying the price. That's cool. So here it seems like we have a kind of communications uh, um, channel also need to be established between the buyer and seller without mediator. That's great. And uh, other thing is the payment system will collect the money of the, the product and a certain percentage of the final product price will be hold for the platform and the rest of all will be released to seller. So what I understood from this uh, requirement, this the C2C portal or eBay, how exactly it is doing, it is a kind of revenue based model and um, the, the revenue is uh, coming uh, from a uh, specific customer. Whenever the seller is selling this specific product, then seller has to pay certain percentage of the and the, the final product price to the portal, right? That is how uh, that is how this portal is going to be gain the money. 
and after that buyer can rate the experience and the process uh, seller delivery etc all right so buyer can buyer can have to have a kind of rating experience also uh, about the about the process or seller or delivery etc that's cool and the communication of every process will be notified through sms and email notification and final this uh, final thing is here the um, there should be a kind of communication channel as well as where uh, all the communication has to be notified through uh, through sms and the email notification so apart from uh, the understanding uh, it is pretty clear we should have to uh, have a kind of web application where the buyer and seller bot will be there and the seller can sell the product and seller can set the specific price for a specific product and other stuff is when the final deal going to be happen in this in this platform then certain percentage of the amount will be deducted from the seller seller side to the platform all right it's a kind of like service source maybe and after that once the product will be delivered then buyer can read the experience and yeah the, the the communication has to be uh channel has to be there just like you know chat application or maybe uh through email or sms so all those things are going to be needed now what you can do now we need to find out the use cases of this whole application right so what is the use cases it will be like uh, let's figure out right here all right so let's find out the use cases here so for illustration i am using whimsical in your case you can also use whimsical or maybe you can use the draw.io or uh, lucy chat or something else uh, there are a lot of uh, online tools are available uh, you can use one of them that's perfectly fine um i am going to use uh, this tool and let's add the use cases here so let's make this font a little bit bigger so a little bit more big yeah that's cool now the first use case will be uh, seller uh, can sell the product sell products online online and second use case will be buyer can buy product online and third use cases will be transaction will take place between C to C customer to customer right and fourth use cases will be a commission commission of certain percentage all right commission of certain percentage of certain percentage will be will be sourced sourced for final transaction that's good and the port use cases will be uh, notify notification or or channel needed needed to collaborate collaborate buyer and seller buyer okay perfect so these are the use cases we are we need to cover in this application all right so let's let's add a diagram to just to understand the communication the collaboration here this is a seller seller and we can pick a color from your right then this is the platform platform and after that this uh, this is buyer buyer and let's make it a bit bigger uh, we need to change the shape so this is going to be platform seller can come to the platform and buyer also can come to the platform right buyer and seller will be there and the third thing is going to be happen like payment gateway this is the basic requirement I, I, we should have to have in this application first right so perfect this is the basic use case of a whole application where seller is going to be involved seller will be going to be interact with the platform buyer also going to be interact with the platform and platform will be interact with the, the products and after the payment gateway is going to be connected and it will collect the payment and again the seller will send the specific product to the buyer right right so now we can see the, the first point the product requirement product requirement is done and now we can move forward to the system design part right 
So let's add a kind of element right here. Uh, system design. Design. All right, so let's understand why exactly the, what is system design and why it is necessary. The system design is a kind of systematic approach to build a software system with a technical and non-technical requirements, with the clarifications of needs, and they come up with a kind of plan to solve it, right? System design is a part of the software development approach where we will be, where, where we'll be figure out what are the functional requirements, what are the non-functional requirements, or what are the other requirements we need to keep in mind to build that specific system, right? Let's list it out the, the components. So first point is, uh, I'm gonna increase a bit the size, okay? The first point is uh, the functional requirement. Second point will be non-functional requirement. And third point will be our data storage requirement. Perfect. So let's discuss what is functional requirement. I'm gonna create one more element right here. So what are the points we can add uh, right here in the functional requirement? So by keeping eye on the, the product requirement details here, and we need to have we need to have a kind of login and register functionality, and we can see uh, the communications channel also we're going to be needed where we are sending the SMS right and the email notification. So the, the technical thing is while we are going to register, then we should have to collect the phone number also. So let's add all those points right here inside the, the, the functional requirement. First, Now the functional requirement, the user sign up or login functional is going to be needed because we can see in this picture, like we have a registration and login functional list are there, right? All right, so second point is the user verification, OTP and SMS is going to be needed because here we can see that we should have to notify uh, the, uh, the whole process through SMS as well as, so that's why we need to collect the phone number also. And after that, user can become seller or buyer. That's a cool thing, right? So once you are signing up from here, the register, then right after the registration, you know, then you can have your own accounts and you can become a buyer or a seller. Uh, that's that's a that's a kind of part of this whole application, right? And now, all right, the seller can create and create, update, and delete products. So seller can create the product and they can advertise right here. Yeah, one point we we missed right here. Maybe the point is. Seller can advertise also there. Products, cool. And after that, buyer can purchase the product using online payment, right? It may be card or online banking, etc. And seller can receive the payout, whatever the amount of the quantity uh, they have sold uh, right here, here in the in the portal. And then the accumulated amount that they can re they can receive within a month or something, right? And uh, yeah and the email and message notifications uh, has to be there and after that online chat with the seller and buyer the this feature also going to be needed right online online chat with the buyer and seller is needed needed perfect so these are the functional uh, requirement let's figure out the non-functional requirement i'm going to make a duplicate this one i'm just making it non non-functional requirement let's Second point. Perfect. Mm, just uh, copy this whole content. I'm going to remove the whole thing from here. All right. Uh, what are the non-functional requirement? Because by uh, the non-functional requirement is something like which is need to comply to uh, the whole system, right? Just as an example, you can say uh, the system system should be highly available in cloud cloud
Perfect. So these are the non-functional requirements, right? Which is purely totally different than the functional requirement. The system should be able to highly, uh, should be able to, system should be able to highly available in the cloud with a multiple region because it's a kind of C2C portal, right? Because uh, the uh, uh, this portal, just like eBay, it is it is available around the world. So uh, maybe in different region of the world can be accessible in the different region of the specific uh, the specific cloud infrastructure, right? So in this case, it should be highly available. Second point, system should maintain best practices uh, to able to scale horizontally at any level. So we will discuss uh, the horizontal and vertical scaling in upcoming lectures. And uh, so uh, when the user traffic will be increased or a specific customer base will be grow, then the system should be able to handle and, and it should have to be scaled at any level, right? So that is the point we should have to cover. And third point will be systems should design the way we can break it down into microservices. It should not have to be a big, uh, huge monolithic. So where uh, once you are you are doing something or maybe developing something, and it shouldn't have to be break at at any, any certain point. It should have to be uh, like split it on the different different components so we can deploy in a microservices way. And fourth point will be lose the couple service with the communication. So it should it shouldn't have to be direct dependent or uh, direct dependency with each and uh, each and other services. You know, uh, it should have to be loosely coupled. So and the communication has to be happen in the seamlessly uh, without depending in other services. So that should have to be maintained accordingly. And the fifth point will be it should have a mechanism for logging and monitoring to inspect the services health and availability. So that's a necessary point of uh, any system. So we should have to log our 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 application logs in terms of like application is crashing or application is having some kind of trouble or some bad inputs or any internal errors happening, we should have to monitor correctly. So in this case, we are going to use some kind of good monitoring tool in this time. And the sixth point is system should design with the documentations for a better scope of usability and to understand the architecture and the business logic of the API users. Because uh, we are building a lot of applications, right? But if we are not maintaining uh, any kind of or documentations or how the API is going to be used, then it's, it's, it's going to be like a, a big problem, right? And you can refer just like Stripe or on the other applications or other APIs, how exactly they're building. They're maintaining a kind of documentations and they're, they're trying to make understand how the APIs are getting interacted with each other and what are the uh, communications happening behind the scene. So these are, these are the things we, are, we need to follow in this non-functional uh, requirement. And system should follow the secures. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is necessary nowadays. Okay. Now uh, let's figure out the third point, which is called data storage and requirement. Uh, I'm going to uh, the copy this one right here. Uh, let's make it third point. Data storage and data storage requirement. requirement okay it should have to be plural cool data storage requirement so now let's uh, copy the whole content right here I'm gonna mm, edit the whole part from here it should have to be what is the data storage requirements so data storage requirements will be it should have to be consistent or eventually consistent. So what is consistent or eventually consistent? When we are storing our data from the any services, right? Then other services, if it is uh, accessing that specific data, on the time of the read and write, it, it, it is not the same, right? And sometimes it, there is a kind of uh, a, a, the, the time difference or maybe uh, while it is writing the data and then in the meanwhile, if you are reading the data, specific data, it, it will be not there. It will take some time un unless the transaction has to be committed or something, but we will. We should have to have a kind of mechanism while we're updating the specific data, and if we are distributed the data across the server, then end of the day it should have to be consistent. And we will be using some kind of like the maybe a kind of mechanism, event-driven mechanism, or maybe queue, message queue, or something else, which is going to be make our uh, data storage uh, eventually consistent, right? And yeah, of course we need to follow the, the capture because there are a lot of benefits are there. Maybe in this series you you can you can get an get an understanding of what exactly capture and why exactly we need to use in the in the uh, distributed architecture or maybe database. 
and all the microservices, uh, they, we will widely discuss this topic. Perfect. And third one will be like uh, distributed database system with the highly avail high availability. So uh, in previous uh, many tutorials, uh, I have used uh, one single database and we are storing from the one microservices. But this time in this series, we are going to split it out the database in various region and various, uh, various server and how we can utilize all the stuff uh, with the help of sorting or something else that we will, uh, I will I'll discuss accordingly. And the fourth point is like highly available object storage for the multiple regions. So uh, why exactly the, it, it is it has to be highly available? Because you can imagine if, if you are sitting in the US and uh, or your your server is in, in somewhere in Europe or, or maybe uh, maybe in Asia or uh, maybe in Australia, and then at the time uh, the how far exactly your call has to be traveled to reach to your server. So with the help of the CDN and with the, with the help of like the multiple zones, multiple regions distribution, we will be uh, we can use the, this object storage stuff uh, in, in that way. Yeah, while you are accessing from, from US, then suddenly the object storage, whatever it is right there, it will be accessible from the US server only. It, it shouldn't have to be traveled so far, right? All right, so now we, we understood what is the requirement of the system design. Let's little bit deep dive on the system design part. Uh, I'm gonna create a couple of diagram right here. Uh, just to bear with me, uh, so it will be, it will be more uh, explanatory. Now let's create our first diagram, which is going to be our basic architecture. So let's assume this is our web application, right? And the web application will will, will contact with our API gateway. Yeah, certainly let's make uh, change the shape. Now uh, our API gateway uh, will be will be uh, when our web application will contact with our API gateway then API Gateway will provide that specific request to our app server. So let's create one kind of app server right here. So this one's going to be app server. App server. All right. So there are maybe multiple app server, right? Maybe app server. And this is going to be connect from here. Let's say it will it will come in future, but not instantly. Okay, uh, based on demand, we will be instantiating one more. But for a while, let's keep uh, this one. Perfect. Now, uh, when our app server will be communicate, you know, then app server will communicate with, with our database. Database instance, right? This is going to be like this. Perfect. And it may be SQL or non SQL, whatever it is. And one more thing is going to be needed where, uh, what is it's called our third party. Third party because we are using our payment gateway. So all payment gateway notifications and everything we can just put it here in the third party. Let's make it this way. Cool. And other things going to be happen like from here, uh, uh, this is called a bucket, right? Right? Object stories. Right. Maybe you can say S3. So let's change the save as well as, right? And uh, this is going to be exposed to the CDN as well as, right? So this is the basic architecture of, uh, of whole application. Where we have web application, web application will interact with our API gateway and API gateway will provide our request to the app server and app server will be having all the business logic or application logic and application app server will contact with our database instance and we, it can be connected with the third party and the object storage as well as, right? So these are the things going to be happen right from right here. And now let's say how our user going to be interacted. So this is the basic mechanism of web application with the, the API gateway, right? So uh, now uh, if it is come to like the front end application, then how it will be react? Uh, let's go, uh, let's create a uh, different save. Users, users. Now users will be interact with our our. Uh, come on, this is going to be route fifty three. This is going to be box. Perfect. Now, maybe we can change the save. Cool. 
Now route, route 52 will be connected with the cloud, uh, with, with the cloud front. Cloud front. And a cloud front can have a connection with the load balancer. Will be. And load balancer will be will be connected with our our front end front end application server. Let's uh, change the shape of this one. Server. It can have uh, it can have a multiple, right? And depends on like customer traffic. Okay. This is not like this. This is going to be happen from here. Let's minimize a bit. Perfect. Now uh, this cloud front will be directly connected with the S3 as well as because while while uh, the distribution while the pile uh, of uh, specific application uh, images going to be accessed, you know, then it will not access from directly from the application to go to this API gateway and all. So it will be direct uh, access from directly access from the cloud from to uh, this object storage. So this is the basic mechanism exactly we are, which which is we are we are uh, when it's like system design is come to the picture we should have to think about like this. Okay, now uh, let's bifurcate this one. Uh, this is our backend part, right? This is our backend part. Then it's not required. Let's put it like this. And this is our front end part. This is our front end part. Perfect. Cool. Now this is the best basic architecture of the whole application. So where uh, where our app server will be uh, responsible for our, our backend stuff, and our our um, front end application will be uh, will be responsible for our all the, all this front end interaction. All right. So this is the basic structure of basic architecture of the whole application. So let's one step further with the system design. And um, secondly, what what is the tech stack we are going to select, right? So that is we need to discuss. So in this case, we can think of, there are two ways are there, right? So one is the kind of, so we go with the server and another one is go with uh, the serverless. So let's uh, think about this is server, server and, and this is the serverless one. Okay. So what are the options available for the server? Perfect. So these are the things we can just follow. Uh, maybe we can go with Node.js, Golang, or Python, or maybe others uh, while, while we're thinking about the server. All right, so what is the server approach? Server approach is a kind of approach where your application will be deployed inside a server. It may be a kind of physical server or maybe a kind of virtual server, but end of the day, it's a kind of server where we'll be having a specific certain limitation of the memory storage or the, the processing capacity or network infrastructure, etc. Cool. So uh, we can just build a kind of image of Docker image, or maybe we can containerize the whole thing in one uh, Docker uh, composer YAML file, and we can deploy it in, in a certain Elastic Beanstalk, or maybe go to the EC2, EC2 instances of AWS and deploy it. Or maybe you can go with some other other uh, you know, service provider as well. So that is that is purely the server approach, where we can use different type of language and all those stuff, all right? But what is the serverless exactly? Serverless will be, and that's not a thing. Uh, serverless it doesn't have a server. Serverless has a server, but you no need to uh, buy or rent a specific server to host your application, right? It will be provided by the service provider. So serverless is a kind of way where you will be getting a kind of space or it, it will, you will be getting a kind of uh, a dedicated specific infrastructure to host your application. You no need to think about your server or you, you no need to worry about your uh, the, the memory capacity or storage capacity, etc. So in this case, the server approach, you need to always need to think about it. So when it is comes to like grow your traffic or maybe your application need the more processing power, either you need to think about it, increase the server capacity or split it on into a different server. So then that is the approach of the server, but the serverless, you don't need to worry about it. So serverless is provider will provide you the enable 
uh, you uh, that the specific resources or maybe you, you can scale at any point by uh, increasing your capacity, uh, increasing your uh, processing power and anything. So you no need to think about your server. You just focus on your application, you can deploy it, that's all. Okay, so in this series, we are going to follow the serverless uh, architecture. And um, what are the options we have for serverless? All right, so what are the options are available for serverless? For serverless, we have um, the AWS CDK or serverless framework or some other options as well as, which is pretty much new to the, uh, to the ecosystem. So we are not going to implement other stuff. Uh, we are going to focus on AWS CDK and the serverless framework. Right. right, so why we choose the serverless, not the server? Because depends on this application, you can see like the uh, users are maybe, it can be scaled at any point, right? And, uh, but there's a consequences also. If you are going with the server, right here, there's certain amount of the money you need to pay per month or maybe per running hours or something. And that is, it's a kind of mandatory cost you need to pay for this one, right? But uh, while it is, there is a traffic in your application or not, there is not uh, much more traffic, it doesn't matter. You need to pay certain money, right? That's the, that's the different side of the, uh, the server. And another aspect is like, while you are, you are getting growing more uh, traffic on your server, then you need to pay some extra money also to upgrading the server as well as. Besides the server, the serverless, while if you are not having much more uh, consumption of the functions call or resources, then you, need, you no need to pay much, right? Then you need to pay less because you are, you are not having enough traffic on your application, right? You need to pay only then when you are having a much more traffic and your application demands is growing or maybe your your consumptions are, are, are growing exponentially or maybe some other way around then only you need to pay to the server serverless way so that means uh, this is a beneficial one if you are thinking about like some applications which is uh, totally rely on the customer base or it's earning um, while well, the application will earn then only you will pay something then apparently we can go with the serverless. So that is the beauty of the serverless stuff. And for the server, you need to think about the, all this configuration to scale it and uh, at any point, or maybe maintaining uh, the server or maybe downtime, uh, all those things you need to consider for server, but the serverless, you don't need to consider anything for this one, okay? So I hope you got a kind of clear understanding why exactly we, are, we have decided to go with the serverless for this specific application. So uh, this, this is not mandatory, like every time you need to go with the serverless, it it's depends on your business requirement or uh, business needs of that specific thing. You can choose uh, either server or the serverless. Cool. All right, so now let's move forward a bit on the system design once more, uh, where we'll be, we'll be building our application structure. What is the structure we'll be having? Or what are the services it will be uh, for our applications? So now, uh, what are the services it can have? Right, so let's add the client first. It's going to be client. Client. And cool. Now, our our application can have, what are the services we can have? Let's, let's uh, look a bit on the, the requirements, right? So by looking at the requirement and the use cases, which is we have added right here, right? So where we have added the use cases. Yeah. So seller and buyer, these are bot or bot will come inside the, uh, inside the application, right? Inside the same service, right? This is kind of user service maybe, right? And transaction can have a separate service. We can think of it. And we can have the products also, right? So here, what exactly it has? It has uh, a buyer and seller. It can be come under one, one service. Products can have a bit of kind of different service as well as. And uh, yeah, the payment also have links of payment. We can just put inside the transaction service or we can have a kind of communication also, right? So this communication, we can keep a kind of separate service as well as. So let's figure out like what are the service we can add it right here. Uh, first of all, we'll be going to add a user service. Then another one, maybe we can we can have the, the product service, products and deals. 
because we have the advertisement uh, feature also, right? So we can keep this one as well as less like this. Now, uh, what, are, what are the other services we can have? The transaction also we can have where we are making the payment and all, right? Then one more service you can have, which is going to be because we are sending notifications, we don't want to keep all this notification stuff inside the any service because from the any point from any uh, other service also can send a notification. So let's uh, keep it separate. Maybe a very lightweight service, but it will be better to uh, keep it separate where we can have uh, all the all type of these uh, notification service. Maybe in future, if it is come for, for the mobile notifications or maybe SMS for email, everything will be going here, notification service. Okay, so so far all good. And one more service is missing. That is, we don't wanna mess up with like uh, the other service. That is maybe we can think of it, uh, which is called the, the communication one, maybe live chat. live chat service. Perfect. Now our client will be communicate with this application structure where application, uh, all the application structures is, uh, is a consist of uh, pipe services, uh, user service, product service, notification, transaction, and live chat. Okay. Let's, let's wrap it up inside a kind of single container. Cool. So now uh, this is our service client will be connect to our, our our application, right? Application will respond accordingly the whole communications of uh, inside the um, uh, various type of the components and it will just uh, get back the response whatever exactly is needed inside uh, for, for the client. And, and we are, the client is not border at all, like what is going inside, it's not border at all. Uh, now let's create another container, which is called, maybe it's a database because we haven't we haven't considered database at all so later on we will put inside one single service can have their own isolated database for a while we are just try to put db separately uh, one single db we're just considering because we haven't done the, the database design then only we can have a clear understanding of what exactly it will be all right so now uh, now we can see what uh, exactly we have covered right here uh, from the uh, from the product requirement and the system design and use cases and what are the functional non-functional and database data storage requirement and we just went through basic architecture as well as after that we just went through uh, the tech stack which tech stack we are just uh, decided to go and why exactly we are thinking this is a kind of suitable things and uh, after that we have decided what are the application structure what are the services structure it would be and why we are split it accordingly maybe we could have done different way but by keep eye on the business requirement we are splitting out accordingly i hope you like this video tutorial in in the upcoming episode we are going to discuss about database design and the service endpoints which is also a part of uh, the system design then uh, we will be deep dive into the source code so how we can create the, all these microservices and uh, the uh, what are the process we can follow uh, uh, in order to do the whole thing with the serverless way Okay. Yeah, that's all for today. And um, I'll be happy to see you in, in the future tutorials. Thank you very much.